Hi Pisces, welcome to November. This is Teresa from TowerByT.com. And before I start your reading, I want to call in some good energy. Call in the angels. Create some sacred space. And I want to say thank you for liking and um, sharing my videos and subscribing to my channel. And thank you for those who have um, taken the time out to leave comments and feedback. Um, I really enjoy reading all the comments. Um, it helps me to um, feel that this is worthwhile, whatever I'm doing. So, thank you. And for those who have ordered readings, um, thank you for your support. I'm happy to work with you, and I'm glad to be able to help people through the, the readings. And um, if you want a um, private reading for yourself, you can check the um, link in the description box. That will take you to my website. And we can go into greater depth with your situation. So let's see what's coming up for Pisces. We have a new moon in Scorpio on the 7th of November. Venus goes direct on the 16th. Jupiter moves into Sagittarius on the 8th. Mercury goes retrograde. We've got a lot going on. And a full moon in Gemini <laughs> on, on the 23rd around Thanksgiving. So it's going to be a... A busy month. A lot of energies moving around. So, let's see what Pisces needs to know about love and relationship for the month of November. What does Pisces need to know about love and relationship for the month of November? The moon, the four of wands, the nine of cups, the two of cups, the justice card, the temperance, the judgment, the nine of wands, the hermit. And the lovers. Wow, you've got a lot of major cards in here. Major Arcana. So, this is really good, Pisces. Alright, let's start with the moon. This is the present. And, by the way, this deck is the um, Steampunk Tarot deck. Look at these beautiful illustrations. I just love it. Um, trying out a new deck this month. And I think it fits with the um, energies of November. You know, because it's got darker uh, fall-like colors. At least for the you know, if you're in the United States, or if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, we're having fall right now. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, happy spring. So anyway, you start with the moon and the Four of Wands. The moon card, this is a card of imagination. This relates to the planet Neptune, um, the planet of spirituality, the planet of the unconscious, the planet of imagination. Um, but, and the other side of it is the planet of illusion, idealization, deception, but it's also creativity. So Pi I feel with Pisces, this is tapping into your intuitive ability. You are very intuitive. You're very um, spiritual. You just know things. You just sense things. You can feel things that are non-physical. You can sense things that are beyond our five senses. You know, you just tap into that metaphysical world, the world beyond... Um, outside of reality or outside of the physical. The moon could also relate to your unconscious, um, the, un, the you know, the subconscious, the unconscious. So, um, I feel like you have this intuitive knowing about a relationship, but at, at times your imagination may run away with you and you start to doubt what that anything is going to happen in this relationship. Or you start to let your imagination, like, you know, you might be suspicious of someone or thinking, you know, is this relationship, can it, can it really be good? Can it be, is it too good to be true? Can I really have everything I want? You've got the Nine of Cups here, which is the Wish Fulfillment card. And the Four of Wands, which is the victory, stability. Sometimes this is a card of marriage. But there's a part of you 
that's doubting it or questioning it. Like, I don't know, is this real? What's real? Like, you're trying to figure out, is, do I, how do I really feel about this person? Are my feelings real? Am I just, am I seeing this person in their true light? Or am I just seeing what I want to see? So there's a, there's kind of a confusion. Maybe there's a relationship you want to get involved in, but you're confused about it. You're not sure. Um, there's potential for stability. There's potential for a soulmate connection. You have this two of cups here. Um, and you have the nine of cups. Like you can get what you want. If you're wanting to connect with someone, if you're wanting a soulmate connection, um, you can have that. But you have to get past your confusion. You have to make that choice. You have to um, trust your intuition. Too. Trust your feelings. A lot of times we don't trust our intuition. We don't trust, you know, we get a feeling like, you know, maybe this person would be right for me. But you're afraid to follow through on it. Or you're afraid to go there because you're thinking, well, maybe I'm just imagining it. Maybe it's not real. Maybe they don't really like me. Maybe they'd never go out with me. You know, you start to do all that, all that stuff. Um, but I, I think that if you're doubting someone's um, love or if you're doubting someone's, your feelings about someone or what, if you're doubting what you're, the, the impressions that you're picking up, um, I think that's just your fear speaking. So trust those feelings, trust the intuition. You know, if you're feeling like I, I need to follow this certain path, um, Go with that. Because you have this Nine of Cups and the Two of Cups. There is the potential. Plus you have the Lovers as an outcome card. You have the potential to really connect with someone on a deep level. Um, and it could also be a very spiritual relationship. Like you're on the same page. The Two of Cups is um, is about two people that are really... They're like a good team. They're on the same page. They, they're thinking. They think alike. They they understand each other on deep levels. Um, and I feel like there could be a, it could be um, something that's more than physical. Like the Nine of Cups is a physical relationship. You might in the past you may have been in a relationship that was more physical than spiritual. Um, you know, there was a sexual attraction. But this time, you have the potential to connect with someone on a more spiritual, like a soulmate connection. You know, your soul, like a soul union. And you have the justice, like look at all these major arcana, the moon, the justice, the temperance, the judgment, the lovers. I mean, you, this is like a major turning point in your life. You're at this karmic crossroads. The justice card represents karma. That this connection, this soulmate connection, is a karmic one. It's almost like it's your, part of your destiny. Like you are destined to connect with this person. And the temperance is here. It's like you're being spiritually guided. The temperance, you can't see it so much on this card. Um, but in some of the other cards, it shows an angel. Like, well, here's the wings. But it, re it represents the Archangel Michael. And it also represents that you're getting you're getting um, assistance from beyond, you know, from the other worlds, the other side. You know, the metaf it's like you're getting spiritual guidance. That's the word I want to say. And you're being spiritually guided to go in a specific direction in terms of relationship. And the person that you want to connect with, there's a lot of compatibility. I'm just seeing you're like two peas in a pod. There's a lot of equal. You could have an equal partnership. Look at all the, you have the scales here with justice. Temperance is also about balancing the energies. You know, you may be very different, but when you come together, you blend, you know, your blended personalities create like a beautiful, um, this is like the card of alchemy. If you look at, I mean, you can't see it too much here. In some of the cards, um, the angel has got two cups and they're blending. 
They're fun. It's like the perfect blend or the perfect mix between two different people. So two people coming together and they're just perfect for each other. That's the, the feeling I'm getting. And the justice card, sometimes that could relate to a, some legal um, situation that has to be worked out before you can join together with this person. But the higher, um, the higher meaning of the justice card is the karma. So you've been through, if you've been through difficult times in the past and you've given a lot in relationships and you felt like you never really got what you deserved or life has just not handed you um, a good hand, let's say, um, justice means that now it's your turn to enjoy, to have karmic reward. You know, it's, a, it ju it's about karmic reward, justice being done. Like whatever energy, it's just karma is about whatever energy you've put out there is now going to come back for better or for worse. But in your case, Pisces, you know, you're, you're so compassionate, you're so giving, you're so loving, you've given so much in your life. And maybe you weren't always appreciated or valued. Maybe you didn't always get back what you deserved. Now you are. You're going to be connecting with someone that is, it's going to, you're going to get back the, the same love that you can, you're able to give. Like with the same compassion and the same energy. I feel like that you're going to connect with someone who understands love in the same way that you do. Who has the same amount of compassion, the same amount of, um, you know, that can operate from a higher level of love. It's a higher level of love. Not just physical. It's not just sex. It's not just like, oh, he's cute or she's cute. She's gorgeous. You know, it's not like that. It's more like connecting on the soul level, like two hearts. You love the inner person, the person who they are on the inside. And that never changes. You know, your physical body over time, um, beauty fades, you know. So any relationship based on physical attraction is going to fade. You know, and eventually you don't feel like having sex every day, you know, so. But if you're connecting with someone on a soul level, you could be 110 years old and you still love each other. You could be wrinkled and falling apart and hardly able to walk, but you still, you ever see those old couples and they're holding hands and they're like on their deathbeds, you know, that's the kind of love that is coming your way. Someone that's going to be there for you until you die, you know, they're not going to, it doesn't matter if your youth, if your hair falls out and your teeth fall out and, you know, you go gray and you get fat and whatever, they're going to just, they love who you are. And that's the kind of relationship I'm seeing with this. And judgment, judgment is here. This is like a rebirth card. Um, you're going to start, you're, you're waking up to, to what's real and what's valuable in your life and what's important in relationships. And so you're going to be making changes. You're changing on the inside and it's going to be changing everything on the outside. So you're, you're, if you're in a relationship, you may change, need a different type of partnership. Um, if you're not in a relationship, you could be attracting someone that's a good match. That's a real soulmate. And so you, you could be changing jobs. You could be changing. You're, you're ready to make changes. A part of you is still afraid of the changes because the judgment is in your negative thinking sector, your fear sector. So it's like you know what you have to do, but you're afraid. You're afraid to take action. And you have the nine of wands here. You've been struggling for a long time. You might be working really hard and you're exhausted. You've been carrying a heavy burden and you're just really exhausted. But um, don't give up. You're going to reach your goal. Now, the Hermit card is here. So you might have been taking some time out to think. You might have been um, doing some soul searching. Um, trying to figure out what's right for you. Maybe you're not sure what you really need or what you really want. And you want to take some time out to really get it right. You might have been um, feeling lonely. You might be going through a period of loneliness. Maybe you've been working really hard on something. You've been carrying a lot of burdens. And you're almost ready to give up. Maybe this is something, this relationship is something that you've wanted for a long time. Um, and you've almost given up on it. But it's coming. The hermit is also going to someone for advice. 
So it's possible that you're taking time out. Maybe you're talking to people about, you know, what should I do? Should I get involved with this person or not? Um, you know, you're not, you're looking for direction and wisdom with the hermit. You, this is the card of following guidance, following the guidance of someone whose opinion you respect. But the, you're making, you know, you're at the point where you have to make some major decisions. You, you know, you, I think you understand the importance of this and the potential, and that's what's scaring you, maybe. And then you have the lovers here as an outcome. This is, this is love, the highest form of love. This is like, go for it. Um, there may be some decisions that you have to make. Like the lovers is a card of you could be choosing between two people. Do I leave a relationship that's not working to go with? where my soul is calling me to be with this person. Do I get involved or not get involved? Like maybe you're not involved with someone and you're thinking, should I get involved with this person? So you're at that crossroads where the decision you make is going to be life altering. And you realize the, the importance or the um, seriousness of the decision. And that's what's kind of like holding you back. That's what's confusing you. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Because I know how important this decision is. And if you don't want to make the wrong choice, and you don't want to, you know, you know that when you make this choice, it's going to lead you on a different path. And you have to really think, is this the path I want to go on? So, but love, look, the two of cups and the lovers, the four of wands, this relationship it could be very stable, it could lead to marriage at some point. Or even if you don't want to get married, it will lead to a relationship that lasts, justice. Um, this is a karmic relationship. This is someone that you've been, it's almost like you're destined to be together. You're, there's some kind of destiny bringing you together. So don't give up on the dream. Don't give up on the goal. Um, I don't care how tired, you know, you might've been working, trying to achieve this goal your whole life. And you're like weary, you're battle weary. But changes are coming that it's going to feel like a rebirth, like it's you're, you're being reborn into a new life. And it's a good one. So let's see what the um, astrology has to say here. The new moon is happening in your ninth house. And you have Neptune in the first, Pluto in the eleventh. So yeah, Pluto is definitely connecting with you. The new moon in your ninth, you might be having a new beginning that involves dealing with people that are a different culture than you. Like you're expanding your awareness. You're expanding your belief systems are changing. Maybe your 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 beliefs are changing. Like you're having a new way of thinking about spirituality, or a new um, you might be thinking of broadening your horizons. Maybe you've lived a narrow and you've had a narrow existence, and now you're wanting to expand and explore. So this new beginning, you could be starting a new educational program, even, some of you. Um, Neptune in the first, you know, that's a card of spirituality, of the healer, the mystic. Um, you, you might be trying on different personas when Neptune's in the first house. But Neptune is trining the new moon. So the new beginning, whatever you're starting... Um, it's, it can bring you something that's very, a person that's very different, very spiritual. It can bring a dream that you've wanted to achieve for a long time to fruition. So you could be connecting with someone, your, your, your spiritual beliefs might be changing, your spiritual path might be changing. You could be connecting with someone from a different, who has a different type of spirituality, who's teaching you to see things in a different way, from a different culture, you know, you're blending different cultures together. Um, but you're being supported by Neptune. You could achieve a dream. And you could agree, and you could be connecting with people in power, with Pluto in the 11th. Um, the friendships that you're uh, making, you might be joining with a group that wants to change the world in a powerful way. Um, so you're doing, you're concerned with like social issues too. The full moon in Gemini happens in your fourth house, fourth and tenth. So something is coming to completion. 
concerning your home and also your career, your status. You got Mars going through your first house by this full moon. Mars will be in um, Pisces. So it's giving you the energy to go after what you want. It's, going, it's giving you the energy to achieve a goal that you've wanted to achieve for a long time. Jupiter in the 10th is career success. Um, something is finishing up in your career. You're achieving a goal, in a career goal. That's for one. But it's also... Um, Mars is giving you that energy to go after what you want and to achieve your goals. And that could happen. It's not only career, but also your home. Something that you've wanted to achieve in your home life, too, is coming together. So you might be finishing up some home project. Um, but I feel like the energy with this full moon in Gemini is centered around career and status. The North Node is moving into Cancer and it's going to be affecting your fifth house. That's the house of romance, um, creativity, children. So something, it's almost like you're being called to do something, to enjoy life, to do something more fun. There could be a new relationship coming that's very karmic because the nodes have to do with karma. And um, it's going to allow you to enjoy life and to have more fun and more creativity. So this person could be very creative. Um, but, the, but it's also through this creative, you know, having fun, enjoying, you know, honoring your inner child, doing something creative, creative self-expression, this relationship will also have a healing um, effect on you. So, you, you, you know, if you've been through a lot of struggles and difficulty, this new cycle that's coming is going to um, allow you to have more fun in life, enjoy life more. Like, you know, hard work is over, your burdens are over, now I can have fun. I've paid my dues, I've done, you know, I've fulfilled my karmic burden, and now I'm, I can step into a, a lighter time, a more loving time, a more happy time. You know, the worst is over. And I can achieve a goal and a dream that I've wanted for a long time. And if, for, for a lot of Pisces, that is connecting with someone at the soul level, having that soulmate relationship. Because Pisces is so romantic. You just want to have that, that soulmate connection. You've been wanting that your whole life. You can have it now. So don't doubt your intuition. Um, embrace this opportunity for a karmic connection a soulmate connection. And it will change your life in a good way. It will take you on a new path, but the path will be one that, it'll be like a dream come true. So I hope you enjoyed this reading, Pisces. I hope this has been a help to you. And um, if you're in the United States celebrating, happy Thanksgiving. If you'd like to have a private reading where we can go into greater depth um, on whatever is concerning you at the moment, you can just click on the link in the description and that'll take you to my website. We can get you scheduled. In the meantime, embrace the love. Oh, I mean, this is going to be great. Um, embrace the love. Your karma, your karmic situation is changing. It's time for you now to receive. You've been doing all the giving. Now it's time for you to receive something solid, something stable, to connect with someone who really gets you, who can give you this, the love that you know, can appreciate the love you have to offer and return it. That's the most important part. Return the love. Um, it's exciting. I'm excited for you. So anyway, enjoy November, and I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye.